Welcome back. In the previous two videos, we talked a lot about the types of resets you can detect within your sketch running on an Arduino Nano Every. More specifically, a Mega AVR Zero Series 80 Mega 4809. Cards here, links in the description. However, there was one reset, the brownout reset, I wasn't able to show you up to now. And yeah, that's what all this get up is about. We talk about it in a second. So in this video and maybe <laughs> in the video after this, we will talk about brownout resets. And in this first video, I first want to determine if an Arduino Nano Every can experience a brownout at all. Enjoy! Let's first talk about the power supply architecture, or how they call it in the Arduino Nano datasheet, a power tree. So the USB comes in here and yeah, that should be around about five volts and that's decoupled by a diode, more specifically a Schottky diode from your V in pin where you can feed in between seven and 21 volts. And that goes into, according to that diagram, a DC DC converter that can deliver up to one amps and is converted to our five volts rail. That 5 volt rail supplies our 80 mega 4809 which is happy within a voltage range from 1.8 volts to 5.5 volts. And of course you have the 5 volts available on a pin for use application. Up to 950 milliamps. Mm, remember that can only deliver 1 amp. Anyway, the 5 volt rail also goes into a 3.3 volt low dropout linear regulator and that gives us our 3.3 volt rail which supplies the SMD1114 uh, which is happy with a voltage range between 1.62 volts to 3.63 volts and also you have that 3 volt pin where you can also pull out up to 50 550 milliamps. Uh, obviously there's a little contradiction here. So uh, total consumption of your user application out of the 5 volt pin and the 3.3 volt pin should be probably well below one amp. Besides a little confusing amperages here, there is another problem with that power tree diagram and that's that the first three blocks here are simply BS. The schematic for the Arduino Nano Avery reveals a clearer picture. So we have here USB, VUSB coming in and that goes through a Schottky diode, which has, uh, depending on how much current you are drawing between 250 millivolts and 450 millivolts drop, and that feeds direct into your 5 volt rail, okay? And only the V in pin goes through that switch mode buck converter and the 7 to 21 volts are converted down to 5 volts for the 5 volt rail. And then, yeah, that was correct. The low dropout uh, linear regulator follows here and that has a usual drop out about 250 millivolts. So as long as you're feeding in 3.55 volts, uh, that should be happy. The footnote to the power tree diagram is not <laughs> saving grace here because it states since VUSB feeds V in, which it doesn't via a Schottky diode, yeah, it's there. And DC DC regulator specified minimum input voltage is 5.4.5 volt. No, it isn't, it's seven volts. The minimum supply voltage from USB has to be increased to a voltage in the range between 4.8 to 4.96 volts. Remember that voltage drop between 250 and 450 millivolts, depending on the current being drawn. 
Now let's talk briefly about what I have on the breadboard. I already talked about that in detail in the previous video, uh, at least the LED part already carded, link in the description. So we have our Arduino Nano Every and that can light up five LEDs. And then I have four different test points here, uh, my ground pin, my V-in pin, my 3.3 volt pin and my five volt pin. Uh, ground, of course, I need. Uh, the in I'm feeding in uh, some supply voltage from my power supply and the 3.3 volt rail and the 5 volt rail I'm measuring with the multimeters. Let's also talk briefly about the sketch I'm using. Again, not going into the details. It's basically the same sketch I used in the previous video, already carded, link in the description. I just removed all the serial stuff. So I have some includes here I need, again, details in the previous video. And then I define my five LED pins. And then in the setup, I switch them all to digital outputs and I write a low to all to them, lighting the LEDs up. Then I wait a thousand milliseconds a second uh, so we see all five LEDs are working. And then I write to them either the state of a specific reset flag so either brownout reset, external reset, UPDI reset or power on reset. And for the last pin, the heartbeat LED pin, I just set that to output high, meaning switching off the LED. And afterwards I clear all the reset flags. In the loop, I just have here my static Boolean heartbeat, which I initialize to true. And every time we go into the loop, heartbeat is equal to not heartbeat. So toggling it around. And I write that to my heartbeat pin and I wait 250 milliseconds in each loop. So I'm blinking my heartbeat pin at approximately two hertz. That's it. And just that you know which LED is which when looking at the video, uh, the blinking one is obviously the heartbeat LED, then that's the power on reset LED, that's the UDPI reset LED, that's the hardware reset LED. If you don't believe me, we can do a hardware reset. <coughs> Okay, hardware reset LED. And the last one, the red one, that's actually the brown out reset LED, if we see a brown out reset. And now without further ado, let's start the fun. So we switch the power off. And by the way, that's the 5 volt rail and that's the 3.3 volt rail. Uh, the contrast is not too great, but uh, I think you can read it. And we switch the power on and we get a reset and yeah, a power on reset. And we are alive and I'm feeding in currently uh, 7 volts. So let's decrease that slowly but steadily. 6.9 volts, nothing happens on the rails. 6.8, Oh, 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 no. Uh, uh. Last digit, don't care. 5.9, 5.8, and uh, okay, our five volt rail is dropping. Our 3.3 volt rail is still stable. 5.7, okay, our five volt rail goes down further. 5.6, 5.5, Remember, that's absolutely no problem for the 80 mega. 
5 volt at the V in pin. Uh, yeah, if you would put 5 volt USB into the V in pin, you, yeah, okay, forget about it. Okay, 5.0, 4.9. And uh, to be honest, by now, if that thing would be correctly configured uh, out of the box, we should already see uh, a brown out reset, which we don't. 4.8, well, down to 4 volts on the 5 volt rail. 4.7, our 3.3 volt rail is still happy. 4.6, 4.4, 4.4, 4.3, 4 4.2, 4.1, 4 volts. We're still happy and the 3.3 volt rail is unfazed. Oh, there's no load on it, of course. 3.9, 3.8. We're down to 3.3 volts on the 5 volt rail and we still have 3.3 volts on the 3.3 volt rail. That's good. 3.7, ah, see, at 3.7 and we are going here below 3.3 volts and our 3.3 volt rail starts dropping now to 3.6. We're still up and running. 3.5 and we died. Okay, so up to 3.6 volt V in without any additional load, we are happy. Now, at what voltage we are coming up again? out of this brown out. Uh, 3.6, nope. 3.7, nope. 3.8, nope. 3.9, and we're back in business. So at 3.9 volts, there is a little hysteresis in that switch mode converter. Uh, we are back in business. <clears throat> Let me summarize that. So, reducing our VN slowly to 5.9 volts, everything is hunky-dory, 5 volt rail is at 5 volt, 3.3 volt rail is at 3.3 volts. If we go below that to 5.8 volts, yeah, the 5 volt rail drops below 5 volts, but uh, yeah, still everything is running. Uh, our 3.3 volt rail stays stable at 3.3 volts down to 3.8 volts V in. And then at the next step, 3.7 volts, we, uh, yeah, <clears throat> only two digits, but it was a little bit lower than 3.3 volts here. And that continues down to 3.6 volts, where both the 5 volt rail and the 3 volt rail are at about 3.2 volts and if we go further down to 3.5 volts we in yeah we're dead booting up again that is increasing the voltage again we can increase from the 3.5 volts up to 3.8 volts and nothing happens only when we cross the threshold here to 3.9 volts the rails come up again yeah 5 volts of course not at 5 volts but 3.4 volts and 3.3 volts happy at 3.3 volts and everything yeah is blinking and nice. So what does that all mean? Uh, first of all, it means that we will have an upcoming video that talks about the Mega AVR Zero Series brownout detector. Uh, more seriously, obviously the brownout detector in our AT Mega 4809 is not properly configured uh, by default in the Arduino environment and so we don't get a brownout reset after we come out of a brownout. Uh, yeah, so Till then, bye.